Look, this may just be my giant man crush on Ewan McGregor talking, but I am loving the latest Star Wars series, Obi-Wan Kenobi. From the sets, to the story, to the cast, to the cameos, it is my absolute favorite thing that Star Wars has given us in a long time, aside from visions, though that doesn't count. More than anything, I'm finding myself gripped to Kenobi as a Christian. As usual, there's a serious bit of overlap and faith-based inspiration behind the storytelling in Star Wars. I mean, the Force be with you, it's a bit on the nose. But this story tells a part of the Christian journey that doesn't get told near often enough. Particularly joyful for me, it's downright Methodist. To make matters that much more interesting, the phrase that is planted in my mind isn't one spoken by the titular love of my life, Obi-Wan, but is instead one uttered with distaste by the villains over and over again the Jedi will hunt themselves. What does this terrifying concept mean for us today? Do we want to be hunted? Let's talk about it. Welcome to Checkpoint Church, where nerds, geeks, and gamers come together to talk about faith games and counting down the days until Disney leans into the meme and has it even say, hello there. I am your nerd pastor, Nate. If you like these weekly deep dives, be sure to sub, hit that bell, and find out when our next one drops. As usual, we'll be starting with our scripture for this video. Our scripture comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 33 through 35. I'll be reading from the NRSV. That's what's going to be on the screen. That's my preferred translation. If you have one that you prefer to use instead, feel free to use that one as well. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Before we get too into the weeds with the scripture and the story surrounding it, let's talk for a moment about Obi-Wan Kenobi and this new series. Obi-Wan was always my favorite character in Star Wars, which may make me the most vanilla Star Wars fan of all time, but don't you judge me. Obi-Wan was also one of the more challenging characters to get right for the series. Since the Star Wars films were written out of order, the writers of the prequels had a series of challenges on their hands, keeping a consistent storyline with the Ben Kenobi that we meet at the beginning of the first film. For starters, as has been famously mocked, Ian McGregor is quite a bit younger than the original actor Alec McGinnis who played Ben Kenobi, so he has quite a lot of aging to do in the 10 years between our series and A New Hope. But even more than looks, there are so many moments that have to be experienced between these two films. The Obi-Wan of the original trilogy was a bit of a mysterious hermit. We got to hear some names and experience some environmental storytelling, but the Obi-Wan of the prequels was a much more fleshed out character with real depth and weight. So when we pick up this series, we see Ewan's Obi-Wan officially don the name Ben and begin to transform into the McGinnis Ben we met a long, long time ago. We know that, of course, the real crux of the issue that led to Ben becoming the hermit he was in A New Hope was due to the fact that the Empire had spent decades hunting down and eradicating any and all remaining Jedi from the days of the Senate, as well as any Force-sensitive younglings that might be discovered. It'd be easy to assume that Ben did nothing during those years but watch Luke grow up from afar until the day where he would come and be trained by him. But then rises up the pesky line from the Grand Inquisitor in this series. The Jedi hunt themselves. We know that Leia knows who Obi-Wan Kenobi is, because otherwise how else would she notice in the distress beacon from the Rebels to Obi-Wan our only hope? But how? Why? Did Luke and Ben ever bump into each other while Luke was out shopping at the market for the moisture farm? Who knows? With this series, we get to find out exactly what happened, and much as the Inquisitor would have expected, Ben doesn't get to lay as low as he might like, despite his best intentions. And this is exactly the point of this show, and is why these lines are so phenomenal. The Jedi are notorious for being do-gooders. They can't help themselves but to use their incredible powers for the good of others. Whether it be protecting an ally or an innocent, the Empire knows that the Jedi cannot evade them forever because they will eventually reveal their own location, like my three-year-old playing hide-and-seek. <laughs> but it is exactly this that makes the Jedi the heroes of the story and so worthy of that title. And it's exactly that reason why I've always found myself so drawn to Obi-Wan. But make no mistake, Obi-Wan doesn't want to die, and he doesn't want to be found. This is very much against his control. It's from a discipline that has been ingrained into him since he was a child. The Jedi are drawn to the light. They are drawn to show acts of strong compassion. And compassion, as is revealed by our baddies, leaves a trail. So what does any of this have to do with Jesus' conversation with his disciples in our selected passage from the Gospel of John? Well, this passage is one of many that the various gospel writers give us in regards to Jesus' foretelling of his all-too-soon approaching death. Jesus tries to explain repeatedly to the disciples that he will be leaving, and soon, and that they can't follow him where he goes quite yet. Someday they may be able to, but not yet. In the meantime, Jesus offers up a new commandment to the disciples. Love one another as I have loved you. And then he drops this bomb line that this whole sermon is wrapped around. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. How are we known? 
by our love. Jesus says it right then, right there. This line perfectly sums up the idea of the Jedi. The Jedi are known, maybe they are downright infamous for their compassion and for their love. It is their ultimate aspiration and their inevitable downfall. It's a well-known folktale of the foundational church of the first century that outsiders used to call the churchgoers as people that loved one another. They would say, behold how they love one another. It's this that led to the creation of one of my favorite hymns. They will know we are Christians by our love. See, it's a bold declaration. It's a sign that we wear, but it's also a warning by Jesus. Jesus is about to die. He's about to be murdered because of his love. He will be so well known for his love that he will lose his life. And while his disciples are not at the point where they will follow him, if they live a life with that same unabashed love, they will surely follow him. And many of them do. What a goal to be so known for love that we're outright feared for it. We're so loving that people are in awe of it. This is the Jedi, the downright foolish follower of the force. And it's this that Jesus calls us to as well. It's a command, in fact. But what does this command mean for us today? We're called to be foolish with our love for others. Even if we disagree with others, we can't see eye to eye to them. Sometimes we're hated by them, murdered by them. Lord, in your mercy, let us love recklessly and foolishly to the point that we might be known by your love. We should be coming out of our hiding for the sake of compassion. We should put ourselves in the line of fire for the sake of love. So whether you are a youngling, a Jedi master, or out on the lamb away from the empire, know that you are always welcome here at Checkpoint Church. Folks, thank you so much for watching this video. I so appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to watch these nerdy sermons each week. If you're wanting more of what Checkpoint Church has to offer, be sure to join us where we're streaming every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday for the time being. We're also available 24 seven over on our Discord. I'll link both of those down in the description down below. I would highly encourage you to check those out. And hey, quick question for you. How are you enjoying Obi-Wan Kenobi so far? Have you watched episode three yet? This sermon is being recorded before episode four drops, but I cannot wait to see what it has in store after that bombshell of an episode three. And folks, like that, we're gonna end this video as we always do with our three things that we believe to be true about every single one of you out there. Number one, we believe that God loves you, like really, really loves you. Number two, we love you, we want community with you. And number three, we believe that you, yes, you matter. You are a person of sacred worth. The world is a better place, why? Because you are in it. Folks, with that, and until the next time I see you, we're actually going to end this one a little bit different. Rather than our usual Twitch clip and goofy times, this feels like a solemn enough video that I wanted to share with you the song that I mentioned in this video that's so important to me. So, in lieu of our usual clip, here is They Will Know We Are Christians by Our Love. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity will one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love they will know we are Christians by our love. So be it.